Hi, I'm Dr. Ronald Wheeler. I'm a uh, medical director with the HIFU Centers of America and a medical director for Diagnostic Center for Disease. Uh, today I'm going to teach you a little bit about the prostate. So this is actually Prostate 101. So what I want to do is I want to utilize this particular board here, uh, schematic, and identify for you the various zones of the prostate. So when we talk as doctors, this would be the prostate here. The sphincter lives out here. Sphincter's here. The prostate, as you can see here. The pubic bone would be right there, or right there, if I put my hand there. The rectal wall would be down below. The bladder comes off back here and attaches here. The seminal vesicles come off here. Seminal ves vesicles carry sperm during our fertility years as men. If we've had a vasectomy, those seminal vesicles uh, become uh, vacant of any live sperm. So as we look at the prostate here, again the sphincter is out here, the apex is here, the mid prostate is here, the base is here. So as men think about the prostate, where it is, you now know that it sits beneath your pubic bone. So with that stated, we have different colorations here that are important. The yellow zone is peripheral zone, where 70 to 80 percent of prostate cancers live. So that's relevant because we as doctors, I've been a urologist now for more than 25 years, so when we do a digital exam, digital rectal exam, we're actually feeling the peripheral zone. So that's important to know. We cannot, as an example, feel the central zone, and you can see why we can't feel it, because it's, it's hidden and it's away from what we typically would feel. So when the central zone is where 20 to 30 percent of prostate cancers live, uh, Tom Stamey, who is uh, emeritus at Stanford, is noted for saying the PSA could be up to 300, and that individual might do very well with any procedure because it's organ confined. In my 25 plus years, I still have never seen a patient with a PSA of 300 and have central zone cancer. Maybe Tom has seen that person, but I haven't. But obviously he would be correct. We just don't see that. I don't see it ever, and I don't think other doctors see it as well. Now, given all that, the transition zone is the zone that actually expands or enlarges as we, as we age, uh, usually uh, at age 40 and above. Uh, that zone starts to enlarge. That, ver that enlarges in variation from patient to patient. So the bottom line is, is that uh, all prostates are not created equal. They're not all of equal size. But men that have enlarged prostates certainly would have an enlarged transition zone. So again, we understand this, we can see this, and we understand the frequency that cancer is noted in these various zones. What's important also to note is this is fibromuscular stroma. People, when we talk about this prostate and where it sits and so forth, it's important to note that that tissue is represented by this aqua area. And specifically, that area is devoid of or absent of any prostate cells. So it's really fibrous and it's muscular in nature. Typically, when we measure a prostate, we include that commonly. I tend to deduct that, if you will, based on my view live when we're doing an ultrasound. And ultrasound, when it's done, is a great tool to measure. It's a great tool to look for calcification. It's a great tool to look for cysts, bleeding, and things of that nature. But the bottom line is that ultrasound is not a diagnostic tool for prostate cancer. It is not a diagnostic tool. But it's an important tool to the urologist, especially a urologist like myself, that has a keen sense of imaging and also does high-intensity focused ultrasound. So as we look here, you can see this particular uh, depiction here. The prostate, this would be the left side here, this would be the right side here. So as we can see, my digital exam, the probe is down here, so it would actually be there, that would be the probe. And you can see kind of how the prostate looks if we were to think of the prostate like a hot dog and cut it into circles, this would represent one of those circles this would be the urethra, we got the blue would be transition zone, the red is central zone, and the yellow is a peripheral zone, and the light green would be the fibromuscular stroma. These other uh, depictions demonstrate 
where the biopsies would go if biopsies uh, were utilized for uh, de detection of prostate cancer. Uh, patients need to know, many patients that see me and many patients around the country and frankly around the world, they have decided that they would rather do something other than doing a biopsy. I just want to make it very clear that a multi-parametric or multiple sequences associated with a 3-Tesla magnetic resonance imaging scan has been shown to be an equivalent to a biopsy as of January of 2015. So men that are opposed to doing a biopsy, doctors can't fight you any longer. This is proof positive. Take this uh, YouTube video to the doctor's office and play it for the doc and let him hear it from me. I'll give you my, uh, uh, I'll give you my uh, website, which is uh, www.mrisusa.com, and he can, he can contact me there uh, through um, uh, an email, as an example, or he could call the office at 941-957-0007 and debate that issue with me rather than debate it with you. So with that, I'm going to close. Uh, these other images here just simply show the uh, prostate in, in the transverse uh, view here. This would be a sagittal view here. So it would be like cutting, again, taking the hot dog as the example. We're going to cut it into circles. That would be the transverse view, which would be this view here. Even though this shows longitudinal, this is a transverse view. Longitudinal view would be this view over here. And again, it, the, the reason the transverse images are actually down here, in this case the longitudinal images are down here. So it kind of gives you a little sense about what you're doing. Good luck going forward. I would tell you that you do have a choice between doing an MPMRI, diagnostic for prostate cancer, equal to a biopsy. And on that note, I would bid you all well. Just remember there's side effects associated with a biopsy. When you do imaging, there's no needles and there's no side effects. On that note, I bid you adieu. Thank you.